Hello, friends. Welcome back to Colliding Worldviews. Great to have you with me here again. And in this episode is uh, part two of what we're talking about with a friend of mine, Matt Schmidt. He is from e360m.org, and that is Engage360 Ministries. He is the founder and CEO of that. Matt, welcome back to Colliding Worldviews. Thanks for having me on. Really glad to be here. In the last episode, we talked with uh, talked about Jesus Calling, a very popular devotional book that people have read, and unfortunately, without much discernment, have considered it a very good book, and even perhaps higher than Scripture itself, because they think that they're getting a personal um, relationship with God, not in the way that we talk about with the Holy Spirit and dwelling them, but some type of uh, communication that is going on that is unbiblical when we start to right. define our terms and what we mean by the terms that she uses in the book. Uh, per, in the previous episode, we dealt uh, with showing the problems of Jesus mm -hmm. Calling, and uh, given how many copies of the book that have been sold and how popular it is, it's very important to get that information to people. But uh, it seems clear that there's a, a serious interest in general and the idea of getting direct messages from Jesus. Can God speak to us? Yes, but we're going to, in this episode, we're going to get uh, into, into the details of hearing God's voice and why people need to be discerning about that. Uh, why do you think this, this uh, movement or this idea of getting direct messages from Jesus that could even be unscriptural are, are so <laughs> popular with people? Yeah, I think we could probably break it down into two different sides of that. There's there's probably genuinely healthy, good desires. You know, when you talk about a deeper relationship with Jesus, more intimacy with Jesus, that could be a good thing. That could sound really good. That could be healthy. How it's pursued, where it goes is the challenge. And so I think sometimes it's just sincerely someone wants to grow deeper with God and with Christ, and someone says, hey, here's a book that can help you do that. And then they read, and you look at all the language used, and wow, this whoever wrote this has amazing intimate experiences with Jesus, direct presence in, of God around her, um, you know, direct communication. How much more intimate could it get? And so I think that can be the healthy. The unhealthy side can be something more along the lines of, I'm not content with just what the Bible says. I need something more. And and we we you know read hints of that in what inspired Sarah Young and what inspired God Calling, the devotion that she was inspired by, and this kind of desire for more and that what we have is not enough. And this can be played out in a lot of different ways, but it's something that I think is pretty prominent. And, and a lot of the times it's, I don't want to know what broad biblical principles there are that apply to this situation. I want to know exactly what God would have me do in this exact situation. I need a personal message from Jesus to guide me with what I need to do today. And I just don't know that that's a biblical promise that we have, Tony. I think one of the problems is that we need to get – we need to say what we mean. We need to get more technical in our, our language that we use. Absolutely. Matt, you know, you know, you and I as evangelists sharing the gospel with people, and then we uh, read it, books on evangelism, and we hear things that people say in evangelistic conversations. Already, just when it comes to the response to the gospel, we've talked about sin, righteousness, and judgment, and we ask, okay, so what is our, what should our response be to this? And many times we hear these popular sayings, oh, ask Jesus into your heart. Uh, just believe right. in Jesus. Well, even the demons do, and they tremble. Um, you know, give your life to Christ. All these different unbiblical language responses to the glorious gospel. When we know, if we just look to Scripture, it's repent and trust in Christ. In other words, turn from your sins, turn to God, and put your trust in Jesus Christ uh, completely, not in Him plus your works or Him and this but just right. Christ alone, because he is enough. We need to get technical when it comes to uh, repentance and faith in Christ, when it comes to a person's salvation, but also with this whole thing about hearing from God. I mean, how often do we hear someone say, oh, God told me, 
and right. then the, the next part of the sentence comes or right. uh, Jesus told me this or it, it's it's like it sounds like they actually heard an audible voice, which did happen in Scripture. However, they talk about it like it's an everyday occurrence, like every single right. day they sit down and, and they just listen to a half hour, uh, a half hour of, of stuff that God wants to tell them on that particular day. So right, what right. would what would some examples of, of people seeking or thinking they they hear from God? Yeah. So there, there there's an important distinction there between what you mentioned. So there's there's people who are going to go and actually say, you know, they're they're receiving a message from God. This this was a message God gave me, whether we might want to call it a word of knowledge or words of wisdom that those might be terms used in certain uh, circles of Christianity, uh, whether it's someone who's listening for the voice of God and 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 actually thinks that that's what's happening. And then there's someone who's saying, you know, you know, God told me to do this. And when you press what you, what you actually find is they just had a sense of leading. They didn't hear a voice. They didn't have a direct message. They just thought I should go do this. And I feel like God is guiding me in that. Well, that's a big distinction. And so the language we use is so important. And so one of the things I I try to stress when I do talks around this topic is just say what you mean. If you mean that you had a sense God wanted you to do something, or you had a sense that you should talk to a person, then say, I had a sense that God wanted me to talk to this person. Don't say, God told me to talk to this person, because that that confuses and leads astray. If you actually heard a voice, or you think you did, then you know that's a different thing. But most often it's not. And these differences are pretty significant, Tony, because I have met multiple students now on college campuses who had experiences growing up in the church where everyone around them was hearing from God. God was speaking to everyone in their church, and they earnestly sought for God to speak to them as well, and he never talked to them. And so they thought, either one, he doesn't love me, or two, he's not there. Either way, I'm done, and and I'm out, and I'm not a Christian anymore. And what I've stressed in all of those situations I've, I've run into, I've said, look, if we could go back and talk to the people in your church and they could remember exactly what was going on when they said that statement of God told them, God spoke to them, I think most would probably, once we pressed, say, oh, well, what I meant was I was reading the Bible and I noticed this verse in a way that I had never seen before. And it was like God was speaking to me saying, you need to remember that I'm I'm always with you, even in trials. But instead, they loosely say, you know, God spoke and told me he's with me in trials. Well, he did, if we qualify it, he did promise us that he would be with us, but he didn't in the way that it sounds like. And what happens is for an analytical, intellectual person, they believe that when you say God speaks, that means he speaks. And so there's there's this range of everything from someone who's seeking a, a special word of knowledge, something almost maybe more like a psychic practice of channeling, trying to get some sort of information from beyond to apply in this world today to a specific situation. Or it could just be someone reading their Bible and God doing what he can do, which is helping you to understand what it's saying better. And Matt, what we're doing is we're trying to be, again, analytical about this, be critical thinkers erring on the side of caution. We can't right. say completely, according to Scripture, God does not speak to people. But again, right. what is the norm? I think a, a good comparison of this is the whole um, speaking in tongues that some people talk about. Yes, we have spiritual gifts that are in the Bible. Of course, there's mm-hmm. a, a conversation debate that still goes on today between cessationism, that the gifts have ceased, and that the gifts are continuing. But in the middle is just the aspect of speaking in tongues in general. There are groups out there who say, if you don't speak in tongues, you are not saved. Now, that right. is unbiblical. We don't see that. Now, we can't completely right. say, oh, tongues, speaking in tongues are unbiblical. The same thing here. We can't say that hearing from God is unbiblical, but what do you mean by that? And that's why it's so important to, to ask follow-up questions, to find out what people mean, because many times when we ask questions, we help the person who made the statement 
better understand themselves. Just, I mean, you, right. you see the Lord Jesus Christ, he asked questions all the time, but it wasn't because he needed to know what he didn't <laughs> already know. He was, he wanted them to learn something. So you and Absolutely. I and other Christians out there aren't Jesus, but we can ask questions just like Jesus did in order to get to the underlying aspect of what they're actually saying. Now, uh, what do you see is the, the major challenge for people discerning if God is actually speaking to them in any sense. Yeah. Well, it goes to who's who's going to be more prone, Tony, and what you touched on is very important of we're all different. The body has different parts. We're not all the same. And so you and I, Tony, are not very prone to to being as interested in having this. We're not as emotional. We're not and, and there are downsides to that, right? And we have to recognize that. But the benefit for the body is that we're going to be more critical of these kinds of things because we're not going to be very easily caught up in the emotional aspect of it. We're just going to look at it sort of a little bit coldly maybe even, just analytically analyzing it. And that's a benefit to the body as long as we see the gifts of others as a benefit to the body as well. But rather than someone who maybe says, well, you, you're just intellectual, so of course you would think this. Rather, I think the response should be, I'm glad that the church has been gifted with people who are like that because they can help us be more discerning in some of these areas. Now, they still have to put their own effort into it. I'm not saying we speak for them, but I think we should see each other as a gift. And the the challenge when somebody's saying, well, I'm hearing God's voice is, and this is kind of the question that I'll ask is, how do you discern your voice in your head from God's voice in your head, from an angel's voice in your head, from a demon's voice in your head? I'm not even necessarily assuming all of those happen or can happen. What I'm saying is, how do you know, especially when it's not audible, it's not, you know, a burning bush that Moses encounters that's not being eaten up. It's not um, something like what Isaiah has, uh, you know, the, the, the a theophany, something like that, but rather it's just something in our head. How do we know? And this is something that we can, we can, take into consideration when we hear different things from people of decisions that they've made, because just based mm -hmm. on what you said, as well as when our friend or maybe family member who says that they're a Christian says, oh, this is what I'm doing now, or hey, I've decided to do this, and they bring in the whole thing of, oh, God told me, or uh, you know, as a Christian, this is the decision that I'm making. The, the sc scripture itself and Jesus Christ, uh, that, that is our measuring rod. It's like someone Right. Like a lady, a, a lady coming to you saying, "Hey, I'm in an unhealthy work environment. I'm a new Christian. I'm surrounded by non-Christians. Uh, very unhealthy. I've already been thinking about starting my own business, and by doing that, I think I can not only grow in my relationship with God because I'll have more time to work with my own schedule, but I won't have this this toxic environment. And when I'm a stronger Christian, then maybe I can uh, get back into this field and work there again. I mean." Okay, that lines up with scripture of, of growing uh, in your relationship with God and all of that. Now compare that to someone who says, oh yeah, uh, I have a husband, I have uh, five kids, and um, I've just had a, a, a relationship with this new guy at my work, and uh, I've been reading scripture, and I'm deciding to divorce my husband and get rid of my kids because I want to be with this this new person. <laughs> it's like right. bo both situations, people can try to use the Bible or God to justify it in some way. But okay, which one does scripture support? Which one is completely against scripture and biblical morality and so on, right? Right, right, absolutely. Well, and it goes back to that, are, are we promised, where in scripture are we promised direct, complete answers to any question that we ask of God? I just don't, don't really see that. We're promised wisdom, but wisdom is different. Wisdom is knowing godly principles and how to apply them in given situations. And what we see is we we see this desire for a shortcut, sort of like a microwaved, you know, Christianity. Well, I, I don't need all that process. I can't go study scripture and and I can't go just seek godly counsel. I need an answer right now. I need God to just tell me what to do. And I just don't I don't believe we're promised that, and it goes to this idea that there's a perfect thing that God has to have us do or else we're in trouble. And so if he didn't tell us, then how can we know what we're supposed to do? Well, 
We can know because he's given us much in Scripture, so we can know basic godly principles for living. We can know what is sinful and what is not. And so, if we have a multiple, uh, you know, multiple options in front of us with a given with a given decision, and we know that three of them seem like they're godly, we could honor God in them. They wouldn't cause us to sin. They seem to be in line with our gifting and our abilities and our background. While one of them, yeah, we would we would have a trouble compromising our integrity. It, you know, it would be more money, but the, the desires might, might be much more to just pursue money than to honor God. Okay. Well rule out that one. And you have now three to choose from and just pray, do ask for wisdom, seek counsel, seek godly counsel, and then make a decision and act. And I don't think faith is demonstrated in waiting and waiting and waiting until God tells you exactly this is the one thing you have to do, but rather faith is exercised in applying our biblical wisdom, discerning, seeking godly counsel, making a decision that seems best to us, and trusting if it's not best or if it's not good and it is unhealthy, God will make that abundantly clear. And he can close doors that you don't think are possibly closed. Now, he can also open doors that you don't think would be possible. But what we're doing is we're acting in a wise and godly way and trusting that he will change our path if it's unhealthy, rather than the, the reverse of waiting and waiting until God gives us the one thing, because that could be the only thing, and it's on him to tell us rather than on us to apply what we have and make a good decision. Matt, someone once said, if, if you want God to speak to you, read the Bible. If you want God to speak to you out loud, read the Bible out loud. <laughs> <But> <laughs> right. Instead of that, uh, we, we hear many times people say, uh, God spoke to me. I heard God say. God's mm -hmm. voice just guided me saying, and again, because this is a, a subjective experience, because this is a, a subjective experience, we can't say, no, that didn't happen to you. No, and just completely deny the whole thing. But again, right. Scripture is our, our measuring rod. And if what mm -hmm. the decision that they made lines up with Scripture, whether they actually said, oh, God told me or not, well, it lines up with Scripture. If right. they say, oh, God told me, and we can see that it's sinful according to the Bible, there is a problem there. And that's why uh, talking about this is so important. So what happens when, when people think that they hear from God, but what they say goes wrong afterwards? Yeah, and this is this is really dangerous and where I think one of the biggest problems can arise when we say we're receiving a word from God. Um, I can think of several instances, some fairly prominent where someone has a, a you know, significant life threatening disease um, and all these people begin to encourage them. So they think by saying, hey, God spoke to me and told me you're going to be healed. You know, I'm praying for it. If you believe by faith, you're going to be healed. And and when this starts to happen over and over, then I think it can make someone think, wow, I'm, I'm really going to. I have to. Now, can God heal? Absolutely. He has and he does today. But to say God told me this is going to happen, now we've committed God to it, right, in a sense. And what my biggest concern comes in the life of those immediately around the individual if it doesn't happen and the impact on their witness. So when you have several people saying, hey, this is going to happen. God spoke to me. I know it's him. And then it doesn't happen. Well, probably wasn't God, right? How could we how could we say God was actually speaking to these 10 people who said they got a word that this person was going to be healed and then they died. They didn't get healed. Well, not in the sense that they were being promised. Now, Tony, you and I and, and all Christians should be able to say, well, they were healed, right? That that they're in the presence of God that all of the the pain and sorrow and aches of this world are gone. So we are going to be healed. But in this world we're not guaranteed healing. Uh, that's not biblical. Though it's possible, it's not automatic. And so what happens to those around that weren't Christians or were very weak Christians, and now they hear this and they see, okay, well, God spoke to all these people and promised this was going to happen, and it didn't. And I know many stories of people who walked away from the faith because of those very types of instances, and the impact that it has is quite significant. So if we think something like that, like that is happening, we need to be really wise with how we handle it, because what are you going to say to the person, you know, say, a, say a man has, has a terminal disease and you say to his family, oh, God spoke a word and he's going to be healed. And then he's not. 
how do you comfort that grieving wife? Because now what are you going to, what are you going to give her more wisdom that you received? You know, you've, you've lost credibility. I think it can damage relationships. It can damage our faith. It can damage the faith of others. It can damage our witness. And so there can be significant consequences to when we get flippant with how we speak about these kinds of things. Matt, a very important aspect that this always comes back to is, uh, again, it's not only subjective experience, but are you actually indwelled by the Holy Spirit? And we see in, in the Bible when Nicodemus, who was a, a who was seen as a very religious scholar, right. asked Jesus, how can a man be born again? Of course, this was after Jesus said, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of heaven. And this religious teacher, this highly religious guy says, how can a man go back into his mother's womb and, and be born again? And Jesus said that, no, you must be born of the Spirit. Right. And if we are not indwelled by the Holy Spirit, we're still searching for an experience that is, is again, it has to come from, from the outside if we aren't right. indwelled on the inside by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give us discernment between truth and error and truth and almost truth. But if you don't have the Holy Spirit, if you're just looking for an outward experience in some religious way, which again many times happens in certain churches, charismatic, not that all Pentecostals are unbiblical, but uh, right. some, you know, obviously oneness Pentecostals, apostolic, but also there's other just subjective experiences out there that seem right, they seem good, but they're unbiblical. And if we aren't yeah. reading scripture itself, man, I know when I first became a Christian, I um, was traveling with a friend and, and the family to different churches, which looking back now, I know that they were uh, assembly of God, but they were very uh, charismatic and a, and a lot of unbiblical Unhealthy things ways. were being said from the pulpit. And the only reason I know that is because I was actually reading God's word every day. And of mm. all people, I was reading A.W. Tozer. So I have, right. I'm reading uh, the Bible and A.W. Tozer, and then I'm, I'm hearing this unbiblical stuff come from the pulpit. And that is what helped me have discernment. Not because, oh, right. I know better than what they're saying, but because the Bible was my my main <laughs> measuring rod. And on top right. of that, you got you got Tozer to help out and you can't you can't go wrong there. Um, <laughs> right. But what would your what would your encouragement be to those who are genuinely seeking to just dis, to have discernment and to know what God would have them do in different right. situations? Yeah. So it starts off with with no God's word. And if you don't know it well, tr Find someone who does that can help you, you know, be a part of a Bible study, find resources, continue to grow there. That's going to be a part of it. And it's not going to come automatically. I mean, we have to have the long game in mind, right? It's a process of growing. Now we have decisions we have to make at all times. And that's why godly counsel is important. Who are we putting around ourselves? What are they saying? But we don't want that to be an excuse to, well, let's find someone who's more tapped into God and we can go to them. And, and I, I, again, heard a story of someone who was being told by their mentor that they were the, the plug in to Jesus and that if this person ever left them, they would be disconnected and they wouldn't have access to Jesus anymore. And that's a really, really dangerous thing. So when we're looking for a mentor or a role model or a set of godly, uh, it's not someone who – gets the direct messages necessarily. Again, neither you or I, Tony, are saying it's absolutely impossible for that to ever happen, but we don't see any biblical precedent for that being normative, something that would happen all the time. So start with God's word. Learn there. Um, say what you mean and mean what you say. Don't don't say God spoke to you. Don't, you know, or if somebody says to you, you know, God spoke to me and said, just ask that simple, polite, kind question of, when you say he spoke to you, what do you mean? And and wait and see their answer. And that's going to tell you a lot about how you handle it. When we think of messages, sort of direct messages, again, put those f through the filtering process, supposedly. You know, one of the things that I find really interesting, Tony, is that of the people who say that they're getting words from God or from Jesus, it's rarely ever negative. I don't know of a single instance. I'm not saying there's not one out there, and I'm not around a lot of this, so that could be part of it. But I don't know of a single instance of somebody receiving a word from God that an otherwise healthy person is going to die next week, and they need to focus on setting their affairs straight and showing, making sure their family knows how much they love them and that they need to continue on in, in trusting God after they're gone. 
that seems like that would be really actually very, very helpful. Instead, almost all the, the, the things I have heard are God's going to heal you. You're going to have all of this stuff restored. You know, God's got something amazingly great in this physical world for you. It's never a promise of suffering. It's never a look, tragedy's about to strike. And I'm not saying that God has to do that, but it just seems odd to me that the messages are always slanted extremely heavily in one direction. And so be discerning with that. Yeah. And they're always generalized too. I mean, Mm. in script, in scripture, prophecies were given detailed prophecies and they took place exactly like they were supposed to. If it's from God and God's word says it's going to happen, it's going to happen. If you actually do have a genuine, um, message from God and you give, uh, the information of what's going to happen, whether it is in detail, which if it does happen, that's going to confirm it even more. But even if it is generalized, if it doesn't happen, then it wasn't from God. That's the main right. thing that we need to think about. If it's from right. God and he says it's going to happen, it will happen. If you say this is going to happen and then it turns out and say it's from God and then it doesn't happen, well, obviously you misinterpreted something there. It wasn't right. from God. It was, like you said, from your flesh. It was right. from um, a, demo, a demon or, or whatever. But that's the thing is – if it's from God, it will take place. We see right. throughout Scripture, miracles take place. They confirm God and his word and his promises and his faithfulness and all of that. Matt, we only and, have about a minute and a half left. Please give a closing statement to our audience, uh, sure. whether it's on Jesus Calling and or just, just yeah. hearing from God in general. Yeah, just just seek godly wisdom and think about what is it that you think you're hearing or you're being told by someone. If it's go, you need to go visit your friend— just go see them right now. Well, what's the risk if you're wrong, if it's not God? Will you go and see your friend? But I hear stories of people who their friend was collapsed and they had to call 911. So I think that can happen. But if what you're hearing is you need to leave your your spouse and your kids and go marry someone else, we can be pretty sure that's not God talking to you. So, th- so think through those things. What is the content? What's the inspiration? What are you being guided to? And just be content with what God has given us in scripture and in the body and don't yearn for something more. If it's there, it could be, but don't yearn for that. Don't make that the goal. And if we are indwelled by the Holy spirit, we don't search for an outward experience. Remember that too. If you've repented and put your trust in Christ, the Holy spirit's indwelling you. And then you are fed by reading God's word and through prayer and through, there are good books out there. I mean, there Mm -hmm. are definitely good books that you want to be reading, but don't put any of them above and beyond uh, the Bible itself. Matt, thank you so much for being here. Once again, I want to point people to your website, e360m.org. That's E360 Ministries. Uh, If your church is interested in getting some evangelism training, Matt and his team will come and train you because we all need to be out there sharing the gospel. The harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. Matt, thank you so much for being here on Colliding Worldviews once again. Absolutely. Thank you. Friends, share this episode with people. A lot of people talk about this hearing from God, hearing uh, Jesus told me. uh, It's better to err on the side of caution, as we said. So share this episode with people. Share the Jesus Calling episode with people as well, especially if you've heard them talk about that book before. And we'll see you next time on Colliding Worldviews.